and requested and asked for were a bit exorbitant to say the least. Um, so the, obviously it's come to fruition and that's what the NBA is investigating now because a lot of people were making big stinks about that. Having said all of that, what does this say about Kawhi Leonard? Max, I hope you're sitting down when I say this and I hope you completely understand where I'm coming from by the time I'm finished. But what this says is that Kawhi Leonard isn't worth it. Now, let me, under, let me make sure that I, I'm specific with what I mean. Kawhi Leonard is a superstar basketball player. He's one of the top five players in the National Basketball Association. What he's capable of doing on both ends of the floor, averaging 27 last year, being an elite defender, all of these, different, all of these things are true about Kawhi Leonard, and I don't mean to imply otherwise. But here's why I tell you he's not worth it. Because of what the Clippers gave up for him, he has to do more than that. When you give up a slew, like five first round picks and, you know, a couple of swaps and second rounders and all of this stuff. So folks can go and get Paul George because you mandated that that was what needed to be done in order to get your services in a Clippers uniform. Then you owe it to them, not just to average points and rebounds and defend. You have to be that quintessential leader. You have to galvanize the troops and inspire others to be all they can be. You can't be a detriment, whereas you're making demands, you're engaging in load management, you practice when you want, you play when you want, the minutes you dictate. And the word that is prominently associated with you is indifference. Not when it comes to your specific play, but when it comes to those other ancillary things that inspire and contribute to a winning culture, you can't be distant and apart and apathetic to that. You have to embrace that wholeheartedly because that's what you need to do when you've made the demands that you've made. Yeah, the Clippers didn't have to do it and we understand that, but they did it for you. They did it because you said you were only coming if those conditions were met. Get me Paul George. And so that's where it all comes in. If you just signed for money, Max, and you decided to come there because they offered you the Max and you wanted to be back in L.A. near your home and all of that other stuff, none of this applies. But when you hold them hostage, essentially, to get the player, this one specific player that you wanted with you, even if they had to mortgage the house and arguably their future to do so, then you owe them more than 27 and 7 a game and being a great player and an elite defender. You owe it to them to do everything you can as a leader to galvanize the troops and bring everything together so you can develop and ultimately help sustain a winning culture. He hasn't done that part yet. And that's why I say at the moment, he hasn't been worth it. What does this say about Kawhi Leonard? We get to that in one second. First, Stephen A., Jerry West presided over, he was the executive for the Showtime Lakers. That man got, sh later got Shaq and Kobe. Jerry West was running around telling people when Kobe was still 17, he's going to be the greatest player of all time. But I'll deny it if you ever say, if you ever tell one anyone I greatest. said that, right? And, yeah, he said and, and, then, and then I think he said greatest. That came, I didn't hear that firsthand, but that came back to me. He said greatest, but maybe you're right. Well, he told um, me one of. And, he told me and, one of. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Well, that's firsthand. And then, and, then, and then gets Kawhi. And people are crying about tampering. Nerds, why don't you go get Shaq and Kobe Hold and on, Max. Kawhi? Now, in terms of, yeah. Max, he helped yeah. get KD to go to state. He helped get KD to go to state. Right. <laughs> <laughs> crying about Jerry West. tampering. He's Look, Je I know like Jerry you West. can question ethics and say, well, you have to play by the rule. I get it. But but like crying about tampering is like that that's the kind of nerd that the light is red. You're a you're a pedestrian at the crosswalk. There's no traffic coming. It's the middle of the night and you wait there until it turns green, right? Like I, I can't I, <laughs> some people are are, you know, you, they can't be helped. Look. Um Kawhi is worth it, Stephen A. If you wanted to say he wasn't worth it, I don't think that's even the best argument. The best argument is he made the mortgage of the future for Paul George. But even then I would say it's worth it. Because if you're the Clippers and you see what they're putting together with the Lakers and your window looks like it's already shut uh, to try to win fans in that town, because for years the Lakers stunk until Jeannie Buss wrestled control of the organization 
and 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 three years later they they won the chip. Um, and the Clippers had Blake Griffin and Lob City with Chris Paul and DeAndre Jordan and all that, and still they couldn't get it done. They couldn't even get to a conference finals. So if you're Steve Ballmer, you're like, Kawhi Leonard has been the best player on two championship teams. I know you could argue, no, it was Tim Duncan or Ginobili or maybe not Parker by that point in 2014. But I think they were all about the same. And when you looked at the trajectory of where they were heading, there's a reason Kawhi not only guarded LeBron, but by the end of that series was dropping like 20 a game. He didn't average it for the series. But I'd say overall, he's probably their best player at that point. He got finals MVP. And he got finals MVP in Toronto, too, and was clearly their best player. And you could say, well, KD didn't get hurt. Well, if KD didn't get hurt, no one, LeBron James wouldn't have beaten the Warriors. He could for two years. They got squashed by that Warriors team. So of course that's true. And you want to argue, Clay? I don't know. I can't prove a counterfactual, Stephen A. I think well, the Raptors would have won. You think the Warriors would have won. But the Raptors did win. That's best player, arguably, at least, on two championship teams in any way, two-time finals well, MVP. So, no, he doesn't lead the way you're discussing, right? But there's a difference between that and a guy who, say, over-dribbles or, or throws teammates under the bus in the press. Kawhi ain't doing that. Kawhi's playing the way a teammate would want him to play. He's just not, as you would say, galvanizing the troops, to me, that's still worth it. If that guy's going to go out and ball and make the team better and not demoralize anyone mm. and not, and not you know, like mm -hmm. uh, hog the ball and stuff like that and right. play good team basketball, I'm mm -hmm. good. Well, first of all, uh, it, yeah, I think you're wrong, but understand, not only is he not galvanizing, but he is dividing indirectly because if you take into account the beef between Montrell's Harold and Paul George, assuming there's truth to that, which obviously I've heard, well, where would that stuff with Paul George come from in terms of how Paul George and Kawhi Leonard was being treated? Remember, Kawhi Leonard was a two-time NBA champion. He was a two-time NBA Finals MVP. But Paul George was receiving similar treatment, even though he had never even been to the finals, let alone capture two championships and two NBA Finals MVP. So where would that come from? It would feed off of Kawhi Leonard because Kawhi Leonard made Paul George's arrival a condition upon him arriving with the Los Angeles Clippers. See, this is where the accountability comes into play. Again, if I'm sitting up there and I'm a marquee free agent and I tell you this is what I want in terms of money, all right, okay, I'm good. But when I sit up there and I say, not only do I want this money, not only do I want these perks, but I don't give a damn what you have to do. Get that guy too. And I do that, then there's a level of culpability and accountability that I have to a franchise that, uh, that, that, that ascends compared to the average person out there. Even LeBron James didn't do that. He went and joined D. Wade and Chris Bosh in Miami. He elected to take his services back to Cleveland. Ky you know, Kyrie was already there. Of course, he wanted Kevin Love and what have you, but Kevin Love was looking to get out of Minnesota because he hadn't been in the players in his first six years there. Then he goes to Los Angeles. Yes, he wanted Anthony Davis, but he arrived a year before. So he came not even knowing if they were ultimately able to get Anthony Davis, Kawhi Leonard sat up there and held the Clippers accountable in that regard. So when you do all of that, OK, in L.A., knowing Bomber's got a new arena coming near where the L.A. Forum used to be, knowing that you're trying to compete with the Lakers as if that's possible, knowing the backdrop of all of this and utilizing that to your advantage, not only to get what you want monetarily, but in every other way imaginable, thereby forcing the Clippers to damn near mortgage their future. You owe them more than 27 and 7 or being an elite defensive player or an all-star. You owe it to them to do everything you possibly can in order to win. And my last point is, I, ha I don't yeah, know, you know Kawhi Leonard like that. We say hi and bye. I, for all I know, he's a great guy, nice guy, the whole bit. I'm not trying to cast any aspersions on him. I'm just highlighting for you what the Clippers situation is. And based on that, Ka Kawhi Leonard has not been worth it thus far. If you want to say Kawhi needs to stretch himself in a certain direction and try to grow as a person in a certain direction or as a leader, sure. that's fine. But those changes are usually incremental and gradual. You can't suddenly wake up one day and be someone you're not. Now, it sounds to me like the Paul George criticism, and I have it too, right? Because Paul George underperformed, as usual, in the playoffs. Really what we're talking about then is Kawhi. Look, if I were the Clippers, I'd have made the deal too. 
If I can get Kawhi Leonard, fine. I got to trade for Paul George and give you so all the draft picks. I'm going to do it. Too. So would I. Right. We'd all do it. Their hand was sore. In, the, in that way, they were forced, even though no one forced them. But I would say this. Kawhi is not a great, he's not a great GM. The thing about LeBron is his understanding of basketball is such as that he knows exactly what he needs. So if LeBron walks into the office and says, you need to trade for this guy, you should really consider that. He really understands the game on another level. Kawhi is not that kind. He's not like, a, doesn't have the point guard mind, obviously, that LeBron does. He doesn't play GM the same way. So you want to criticize Kawhi, fine, but I think... Kawhi has, he'd have been better off with Gallinari and Shea Gilgis-Alexander, both on.